Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our continued playthrough of Cthulhu, Death May Die, Dance Macabre, Season 1, Episode 3. This is actually Episode 2 of the, or 3 rather, of the playthrough, but we're playing Season 1, Episode 3 of the main box. And in this, we are attempting to uncover some sorcerers, some summoners from these ball goers that were at this party that were watching, a, a going to a ball and perhaps watching a play about the King in Yellow. Um, and we have to usher them down to the waterfront. But, of course, there's monsters and cultists in our way. Uh, in the last game, we had a couple things happen that were pretty cool. Uh, we, uh, Our guy, Alan, the investigator, gathered a, a cook, which was pretty neat. And I think I forgot... Um, I think I forgot something with him. It says, after you investigate... He, see, Alan actually should have two... I want to tell you, two of these tokens. A little correction from last time. So I'm going to put those by his board there. And what those do for him is they allow him to discard a token to move one additional space currently until I level up that ability. He hasn't gotten much insanity, though, so we'll have to see. Remember that in this game, you level up by going more crazy, which is a, a good Cthulhu-type trope, right? So anyway, we're going to get started right away because that's the only thing I can think of that I missed. i got to watch that special ability because it requires a, a very specific trigger. Uh, it's not just run around the board. And uh, we're going to get started with our game. Now, we're currently up to speed. Now, we're very close to having Hastor move on his track, which means bad things will happen. We only need one more of these symbols to come out in order for that to happen. And then we're going to reshuffle the Mythos deck as well. Uh, in the meantime, though, we do have some cultists coming our way. We've managed to clear out the area, and we have been um, uh, getting some of the uh, ball goers away from the... Uh, the area a bit. Uh, they, in the last one of the last cards that we got, people started bolting for the door when they realized it was called sound the alarm. When they realized that we were in there causing havoc, so they're trying to get out. And they moved around a lot, but we're going to dive in, and I think that we are going to start with uh, Marguerite, who is uh, in the best position to do great melee attacks. We could start with Alan. But I don't want to end a turn with an enemy in his space. I would really like to clear it out. So I think Marguerite or even uh, Annabelle would be a good person for that. But we also have to continue to, to discover who the, the sorcerers are. We are summoners, rather. We found one of them who was helping to complete the ritual and started sending him, ushering him on his way toward the waterfront. We'll see if we can get him there. All right, so to begin with, I think we will start with Marguerite. Remember, the first thing you're going to do is take three actions. Uh, a move of a space is an action. Uh, and she did clear this by discovering that these two folks here were just normal ball goers. We have one normal ball goer in here as well. Okay, so for her first action, we're going to dive right into the action here. This is Marguerite. She is right here. And she is going to simply move into this space and have a tussle with this fellow right here. She has the skill of brawling, which allows her to add a green die to her uh, attack roll right now and when they're, she's fighting in her space. So that's very effective. Um, let's do that attack. So remember, in the game, you always use your first, your base three dice. So her first action was to move out. Her second action is to attack the um, the, the uh, cultist in her space. And we're going to do that right now. Let's see what we can do on the dice. Uh, well, that was a perfect die roll. Uh, no insanity. Well, not perfect, because in the early part of the game, you kind of do want some sanity happening here. But... I can always add an Insanity, I'll show you why. Just to recap on her, her special ability of Butcher, the first level says I can add Insanity to any roll. So even though I didn't get any Insanity in this roll and I did enough to kill a Cultist, I can add Insanity, and I think we're going to take advantage of that. So we're going to move up one more. Now, she's got this short-term memory loss, which means if she her stress is full, she will lose some of her uh, her cards. Uh, I think it's just, I think it's all, is it all discard? Uh, one discovery card. She's only got one. It's the animal, animal Tamer. We definitely don't want to lose that, but she's not full of stress either, so we're okay there. She's about to level, though, and that's important. On a good note, we did take this fine fellow out here. He is gone, and I think what we'll do for our last... Um, I could heal her and make sure she stays low on stress, but I do think we need to keep investigating these ball goers before any of them leave the building. We already had two that have been killed. They're right here. That's not good, so I think she's going to take a stab at him at doing what's called the special action of interrogate, which means we get to flip two of the um, ball goers over. So let's uh, flip this person here. Oh, look, I found another one of the summoners. They will stay up and we'll flip this one here. And a normal ball goer. 
So I'm going to put the ball gore off to the side and turn him face down again. There is a bit of memory game, uh, memory part of the game to this, but in this particular scenario, but I'm cheating a little bit by moving him off to the side. Um, I don't know that I am because there's points where you have to shuffle them as well, but based on the fact that I'm filming this in episodes, I will not remember exactly. If I just keep them all mixed up, I will not remember exactly what I saw. Where if I was playing in one big session, I probably would. So that's why I did it that way. Now, she could have continued upstairs and continued to do that, but I think this was valuable because we don't want this guy getting out. That would be bad. Um, and that is going to mark the end of her three actions. So uh, it was a good turn for her. We really didn't have any issues, and she has actually had to force some sanity up to start getting close to leveling. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to draw a myth Mythos card for her. And like any good Cthulhu-type game, this is where our, everything can turn south on us rather quickly, and it kind of has. So this will take place at the end of this card. It says, each hunting horror moves two spaces towards you, dealing one wound any investigator space they enter. Okay. So that's good. We'll put this here for right now. The only hunting horror is way up here on the second floor, so we'll take a look at that. So here is the hunting horror, and it says it's going to move two spaces toward investigator, so it's going to move to here, but it didn't cross anybody in their space, so that is okay. But next up, we do have to deal with the, uh, the special ability of Haster at this level, so we'll take his card and take a look right now. It says, when Haster advances, and I'll show you that advancement in a moment, you gain a yellow sign token. So let me get a yellow sign token out. That is one of these. And it is going on to Marguerite's card. It says, uh, summon one Haster disciple at the nearest gate and one cultist at each, uh, each other gate. So we're going to have a lot of baddies come out right now. But also, I want to show this because we haven't shown it before. Haster, of course, moves along this track. If he ever reaches the end of it, he gets summoned and we lose the game. It's a bad, bad place for us. But if we get to summon him beforehand, we can destroy him. So he's moved one along the track. He's heading down that direction. And that's what it means. It says when Haster advances, all of these things happen. Now we have to go do the summoning. So we do know that we're going to summon one of the um, his Haster disciples. That's uh, these fellows here, the machine guns, at the nearest gate. So let's go take a look at where that is. Well, here's Marguerite. So as I look at the board, the nearest gate is going to be right here. And then we're going to be summoning uh, cultists at every other gate, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah, summon one has to disciple at the nearest gate and one cultist at each of the other gates. So that is going to be one is going to go up here in this space. And then one, I think you can almost see it. I'll just flip this over here, is going to appear here. And that is it. Okay, that was her card. Now, that also means that these are going to come up because we, we had three, and we reshuffle these into the deck. Yeah. It's crazy, right? But it goes that way. And the good news, bad news on that. It allows us to shuffle up a little bit, but yeah. Um, anyway, so we advanced Hoster, and now more bad stuff happens. But that was Marguerite's turn. It wasn't terrible. We do have some more creatures to deal with on the board. All right. Next up, I think we'll go with Alan. Alan is doing great. He has a cook, which means he gets a free rest action. I think he's going to take that first so he has enough stress to play with. So here that is. So free rest, rest action allows you to move a combination of stress or health back down. So we're going to go one, two, three. I like that cook a lot. He's basically giving us an apple as we run down the hallway or something like that. Now, we do want to get him up to his level, even though he's paranoid. If we can clear out the monsters, we'll be in good place. Now, remember, right now he's got these detective tokens. At the moment, they only allow him to move, run one additional space, which isn't that great. Alan is our shooter, though, and he does have marksmanship, which allows him to shoot into an adjacent space. And I think he is going to shoot into the ballroom here. Uh, there is a cultist and a, um, a monster, and he has problems with monsters, I believe. Let's look at his paranoia card, just to be sure. All monsters, yeah, so we're going to take a shot first at the, um, the deep one that's in there, and the deep one has three health. Now, they do have a special ability, but I think it's on their attack. I'm going to take a look at it. It says, it deals, if it deals any wounds, summon a deep one in, a spa in its space in the new deep one doesn't attack it on its turn. Okay, so we want to kill that deep one. We don't want it to survive, and we don't want it coming at us to hit us. So, first we are going to check out his dice. What does he get? Well, he doesn't really get much of anything. Marksman just allows him to shoot into an additional space. Uh, he doesn't have any way to gain any additional dice either, so he's just going to be shooting in there with his three basic dice. Now, if he can gain up a level, he gains two green dice when shooting into a separate space. But 
we're going to see if his first action is going to be to try and shoot down the uh, hunt the um, deep one. Let's see what he can do there. Uh, well, he only got one hit on the deep one. That's fine. That is going to be his first action. For his second action, we're going to do that again. Maybe we'll get lucky, shoot some stuff. We did not get any insanity, but there we go. This is two hits that will kill the deep one. Yes, they have three. And take it off the board. That is good for us. And he gets to go up to insanity. Now that was not his, his uh, um, third action. It was his second action. So we're going to go up two there. That does not make him level, but that's better than... A short stick in the eye, so we'll keep going. He's got one more action left to go. I could have re-rolled. I could have spent stress to re-roll this, but frankly, this worked out okay for us. So, Frank, we've been having pretty good luck in this at this moment in time. I do believe that, though, that his next action is going to be to usher ball goers. And that allows him to move one ball goer, a sorcerer in this case, two spaces toward the waterfront. So we're going to go one, two, and start getting these guys toward the waterfront. We need four at the waterfront to break the ritual. That's the mission that we have. We have two on their way. So what I think what we might do is kind of split up a little bit. Maybe send Marguerite up north. Uh, maybe send uh, um, Alan down toward the waterfront to clear it out so we have we can send cre uh, the uh, sorcerers there. Um, and again, if he gets into that space, he can get them all. If he can get into here, he can get them all the way to the waterfront and keep shooting the monsters as they come on to him, come at him. But when his paranoia activates, we don't want the monsters that close. All right, um, that is going to mark the end of his turn. That is all three of his actions, and we're going to draw a Mythos card and see what happens. Man, we're just getting a lot of those. Okay, well, this is not great. Uh, each, because I was hoping... Oh, you know what I didn't do? Er, er, burp, burp, burp. I made a mistake. I was supposed to draw a Discovery card for Marguerite on the last turn. I am catching this. i got to go down and make sure I read through this and not get ahead of myself. It's a tiger. Gain a tiger when attacking a monster. Gain a green die when attacking a monster. Okay, so we have two choices. An animal that the Emperor uh, of the Far East uh, uses as a guard as guardians. You may take two stress to claim the tiger, or if not, you may you may become ensorcelled. You must become ensorcelled. But we have the Animal Tamer, and he says, you take one stress instead of two when claiming an Animal Companion. So we'll go up one stress. That leaves us with one right now, and we will have claimed the Animal Companion. That gives her two extra health, too. Annabelle is going to be, or Marguerite, rather, is going to be a beast at hand-to-hand -hand combat with her animal tamer and her tiger right now, charging along with her. It's pretty cool. Anyway, sorry to break stride there. We are now at the end of his space. We drew his card, putting this one right here because it's got a hoster symbol on it, and then we're going to have this hoster disciple go one, two. What that means is that he will not be able to draw a discovery card during this time, and he's going to have to defend himself against a uh, one of the cultists as they run into the space there. Um, and then last but not least, we'll do the combat right now, and then we have to summon a, another of the... Well, we'll just do it now. We have to summon another one of the cultists, Haster cultists right there. Disciples, rather. All right, so this disciple runs in and starts to, to shoot off his machine gun in close range at Alan. Can Alan defend himself? Well, the, um, the Hostor disciples roll three dice. They also have a special ability. Let's check that out real quick, because we haven't had them encounter before. So here we go. Uh, let's see if you can you read that. Yes, if uh, if this deals you any wounds, choose one. Take a yellow sign token. Summon a cultist in this space. Uh, we get to choose one. We could take yellow sign token or summon a cultist in the space that doesn't attack this turn. Um, I don't know. I don't know which is better at this point. We're not overwhelmed with creatures right now, but let's see what kind of damage. Now, Alan does have toughness, so that's going to help. Um, that is a great roll because. The Hoster Disciples don't gain Elder Signs as hits, so there's only one hit, the one exclamation point, and Alan has Toughness, which says you have one free reroll when it, uh, being attacked or rolling fire, so we're going to reroll this one and see what we get. Oh, well, it's still a hit. Unfortunately, Alan does take one hit, but that's the first damage he's taken, so he is okay. However, that means he did not get to draw a Discovery card. So we're down to Annabelle. Um, first off, with Annabelle, we have to do something. So at the start of our turn, we always re-roll this. And we, oh, that's a hit. Well, we don't, we're, we're going to use her first action to try and kill this disciple, I think, and get it out of the way. That'd be very useful. 
Okay, so anyway, that means she can use that die, but it cost her an insanity right now. That's fine. She has taken no insanity at this stage. So here is Annabelle. She has really has no special combat abilities, but she does get that, can use that die as an extra hit if she needs to. She's going to get three dice to attack with. Here they are. And uh, she does have Arcane Mastery, which means one of these symbols count as a hit for her. So for her first action, she is going to attack this Disciple. Uh, let's see, she did pretty good there. Two hits and an insanity. She can kill it in this turn. However, she is going to take some serious insanity on this. So I think what we're going to do is Annabelle is going to take a stress. I'm going to do that off camera. She's only taken one stress. And we're going to re-roll this one, see if we can turn it into a hit. And we did. So she does not have to use her special die because it would cost her... Well, I don't know. If, so two's not bad, but we got three here. That won't give her one insanity. I think we're going to use her bone, her die anyway. Just well, <laughs> I think we are. Yeah, no, we're going to leave that alone. So her first hit, she killed this disciple. Boom, it is gone. The dis and that will give her an insanity. Let's take a look at that. So she's going to go up here. Now she still has this die to play with if she needs it, but again, it cost her another insanity. I'm, I'm okay with that if we continue to attack, but let's see what we're going to do next. Again, her focus isn't fighting, but that's okay. I think for her next action, we're going to uh, investigate, or interrogate rather, and see what these two last folks are. They're both um, ball goers. So we'll put them over here like this. That means ball goers are on this side. We're rushing them to the one side of the room. And that'll be her second action. For her third action, I don't want her to get into combat. And she doesn't really need to do anything. Um, she has no ranged attacks. Huh. If I move her into here at this point, she'll have to fight. And I don't think that's a great thing for us. So I think that, you know, we can... Uh, what else can we do as an action? Uh, well, hmm, we can attack, we can rest. Might as well rest. Uh, we can't do any more episode action. Well, I guess, does it help us to usher the normal ball goers down? I, I don't know the answer to that. But just in case it does, I guess she is, instead of wasting an action, we'll take one of the ball goers and we'll make sure that they're on this side so we know who they are. And we'll, move, we'll usher them down toward the waterfront, too, uh, just to get them brought back farther in case that matters. I don't know if it does or not. Um, yeah, okay. So, you know, I probably could have ushered these guys all the way down into here because of this. But I didn't, so we'll leave it alone for now. But now I'm realizing that's all one big space. Here's a space, here's a space. So, yeah, okay. Anyway, that is the end of her turn. She is not engaged with an enemy right now, but we have to draw her Mythos card, and let's see what she gets. God, we're just constantly drawing these. That's the same card, and you see me shuffle the heck out of this. Uh, the nearest hostile disciple, disciple moves two, so she won't be able to draw any cards, and we're going to summon one at the red gate. Okay. Well, so first off, this guy over here, let's get back to the board, is going to move two, and then we're going to summon another one here at the red gate, which is way up top. I don't know if you can see it on this. Yes, you will. Way the heck up there. So now she has to defend herself against this uh, disciple. She doesn't have any. She does have toughness. So it's amazing, being that she's just a she's a channeler. Let's see if she gets hit at all first. And she did not get hit at all by the cultist. But that also means she didn't get to draw a discovery card, which sucks. These cultists are on the move. Makes me feel like I need to reshuffle this deck a little more. I don't know. This could be bad reshuffling it or not, but having those two exact cards come out back to back like that. Hmm. All right. Well, ends the breaks. That is the end of her turn. So we're still in pretty good shape. Uh, nothing bad is happening to us. Let's go into the next round. Um, we're one card away from Hoster moving again. That's not great either. I mean, these cards are coming out super fast, which is not cool. Uh, but I think we're going to go with, let's see, we'll go with, um, Alan does not have stealth. We'll go with Marguerite first again. Now, Marguerite is a great physical uh, violence person. She does have a yellow sign on her, so we do have to be careful. Um, let us attack with Marguerite. Now, again, Marguerite doesn't have any extra dice yet. Oh, she does from Brawling, right. So she gets three dice plus one green die. She's going to attack this guy here with her first action. See if we can put him down. And with the Tiger, oh, that's right, that's against monsters. So the Cultist doesn't count as a monster. And we did some massive destruction there. We got all four, we got four hits in the first roll. So this guy 
uh, explodes uh, when she hits him, she does take another insanity, which is going to trigger her her phobia, which is great. Okay, so this will move it up here. Um, that means we trigger her cat at her um, short-term memory. If you're at full stress, she's not. Um, discard one. If not, he, uh, take a stress, right? Yeah, take one stress. So she's now at full stress. So for her next action, she's probably going to need to rest. But I get to level her up. And it's, I know exactly what I'm going to level her up in. I'm going to level her up in this because now, instead of adding just this, we can add that and a success to it. So that is her main ability, is Butcher, and I think it's a really good ability as well. So let's go back to her next action. Now, that was her first action. So I've been debating, do I send her upstairs or do I send her downstairs? Uh, downstairs, she will deal with more monsters. Upstairs, she has a risk of getting... Um, uh, she either has to run right in and fight one more round against some monsters and perhaps take some hits, but she has no stress currently, so I think what we're going to do is she is going to spend her time healing. That allows her to go one, two, three, because she's not wounded, but we did want that stress back. So that's her second action, and for her third action, I think she is going to work her way upstairs. I think she's going to be the one to go upstairs. Maybe both her and Annabelle will go upstairs. We only have three characters, so we're going to have to make a choice, but it seems to me like Alan might be able to clear the way. Uh, heading down south. So she's going to go upstairs to here, which means she is now in the upper level, but that's where she has to end her turn. And we're going to draw a Mythos card. Hopefully no monsters will move in this round. Okay, let's draw her Mythos card. It does not have uh, a Hoster sign. If you're in the same space as a Hoster, as Hoster or a Hoster Disciple, take two stress. For each stress can, you, that you cannot take, take one wound. She is not in that scenario. If you are not in the same space, gain a yellow sign token. Okay, well, we're going to put this right here. She does gain a second, that's not great, a second yellow sign token. So she now has two. But she did not end up in a space with any bad guys. So she's going to get to draw her discovery card, which is Waitress. There's a bunch of secret tunnels here, she says. Uh, she's holding a sturdy metal serving tray. You may take one stress to claim the waitress, or you can take the serving tray. You gain one free reward when you attack, or you may move between spaces with gates as if they were adjacent. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I can pass that up. I mean, I would love to get her additional rerolls, but she's going to beef up her... She's already got the ability to get extra successes, and if she beefs up her brawling, she's only already going to have rerolls. So I think we're going to take... Uh, no stress to gain the serving tray. Let's gain the serving tray. Um, okay, that's pretty awesome. Now she's got a tiger. That's, no, no, not the serving tray. We're going to take the stress to gain the waitress. So she goes up to three total stress, and now she has got the waitress who can help her move around. And by the way, she is beefed up on health. She's got an extra two, three, four health that she can possibly use in her um, her mission to survive. That's pretty awesome. All right, well, that is the end of her turn completely. Let's go on to, I think, uh, we'll go on to Alan next. That, see, because that may change this. What Alan does may change what we do. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, and I think Alan's the right way to go because he's about to pop off on his stress as well. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he's only been able to make one investigation card, so he doesn't have a lot of his detective tokens yet. But we're going to then, again, take a ranged attack on that fellow here. Now, again, he doesn't have any bonuses on his ranged attack. It's just the basic three dice. But that's okay, because he's getting close to leveling, and we can beef up his either detective or marksman. Probably marksman. Give him two bonus dice in, at range. Uh, so we're going to shoot this fellow here with our first action. Let's see what he can do. Uh, that was not great. He has not used any stress, so I think we're going to burn a stress to get a reroll because all we need is one more hit to kill it. Let's see if we can get a hit. Uh, we did not. Um, actually, this was. Let's move these out of the way because that was like that. So we did not. So uh, this is how this game gets you. I mean, I'm going to take one more stress to see if I can pull this off. We did not. So I guess we're just going to. We our first action we shot and missed. Now he he's going to take two stress. Here's the good news and the bad news. Good news is when you level up, you stop there. So even if you had four stress, you could take, and you were right here. You just stop right there. That's where it ends. You wouldn't. I mean, sorry, insanity. You wouldn't keep going up on the insanity track. That's the bad news actually, because it wouldn't hurt to get us to a next level. However, we do get to level. I was debating on this or this. This gives us a reroll at discarding token, but this gives us two green dice. So there's not really much of a debate. We're going to move up one on toughness.
Okay, I'm sorry, on marksmanship, which will give us two green dice when we take that second action and try and shoot this guy down again. This is the first round. It really hasn't completely gone our way, but I also need to remember and finish his paranoia. So as he leveled up, we need to do this. All monsters on the board move one space towards you. Then if there are no enemies in your space, heal all your stress. Well, there aren't going to be. That's good. It says all monsters. Oh, cultists are not monsters. But we do have one here. So does it say two spaces? All monsters move one space so this, these two fine fellows here move into this space. Great. Gives us targets. These two are not monsters, so they will not move. But this hunting horror does move into here with Marguerite. The good news is it's off turn, so it's not going to attack Marguerite. And then it says, if there is no enemies in your space, heal all your stress. So we're back down to no stress because that is a true thing. There are no monsters in our space. Our paranoia drew them in, but our, uh, our superhuman paranoia skills made it better for us. Okay. So for his second action, he is going to shoot, and I do think he is going to try and take out one of the deep ones instead. That is, he's going to have his three dice again, but he's also going to have two green dice now because we've upgraded his marksmanship. So he just got a lot tougher. So his second action is, boosh, let's see, really bad. Um, he got one hit on that. Oh my gosh, really? Well, so with marksmanship, we don't have any special abilities to roll one dice. So we're going to take a stress. We need to roll... Some new we're going to roll a green one because those are naturally better. That was not good. Uh, we'll do it again. And we'll roll this one. doesn't really matter. A hit. So that's two hits on the deep ones, which is not going to kill it. Um, I don't want to take more stress than that. So we'll do two hits on one of the deep ones. His, he's not shooting very well at all. And then for his third action, I guess we're going to have to take another shot at a monster and see what happens. Well, there, he got two hits and no insanity. Oh, we did get insanity, though. We got one, right? So we'll have to go up one on insanity there. But we got none on this shot. Boom. That will kill this guy. And we have one more monster off the board, but that took too much effort from him. That was not good. All right. Well, that ends that. Um, and that's going to be the end of his turn, so let's draw his Mythos card and hope for good things. No, we're not so lucky. Haster Disciple again. God, he's just coming out like crazy, but this is we're also going to move Haster. Uh, each Haster Disciple moves one space towards you. Well, there's one here. He's going to move, and that's the only one on the board, so we're okay there. And then it says summon one at the blue space. Okay, blue is going to be upstairs here, so I think I'm going to send Annabelle up to help Marguerite. I'm not sure, even though Alan did not do well on his rolls. So that's going to be the end of that card, but we have three again, so... We're going to go move Hoster. So he slides one more down. We're getting into trouble here. And um, let's see. When Hoster advances, uh, you gain one yellow sign token. So our guy, um, Alan, now has a yellow sign token. I don't remember if there's a way to get rid of those. Um, summon one Hoster disciple on the nearest gate and one cultist at each other gate. So here we go. It's going to, the board's going to start to fill up here. We haven't left this, this landing, so one is going to go right there. I think we need to start moving Alan out. And then we're going to have regular cultists pop up here, one at the red gate and another one at the blue gate, way over there. And that's going to be the end of this card. Then we're going to shuffle these up. I'm going to separate them out so they're in different spots in the deck. Maybe that'll help, maybe it won't. But anyway, uh, yeah, because Hoster is moving rather quickly down the track. He's already moved twice and we haven't even gotten one sorcerer into the waterfront. And we still have to get two more visible to us. Alright, so there, that is shuffle. And there we go. Alright, mm, that is going to be the end of Alan's turn. So, that was all three of his actions. We drew his Mythos card. He is free of any enemies, so he does get to draw a Discovery card, which, before I forget, gives him two more of his um, detective tokens. Okay. Gun case. Uh, should be able to smash it open. You you may take one wound. Absolutely. That's, he's going to have to do some healing next turn to claim the handgun. Handgun. Before attacking, you may choose to gain two dice. If you do, move all face down ball goers from your space to an adjacent space. That's fine. Um, I can move them closer. I can shuffle them down. But that's an interesting item. That means if I really want to blast something, I can take... Uh, I can roll, roll four of the green dice along with my three black dice. That's pretty cool. All right, and then last up for this turn, we have Annabelle. Annabelle is here. I don't know if I want her to 
go into a space with monster. She has stealth. I think here's what we're going to do with her. Hmm, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. She does have, no, she has arcane mastery and toughness, not stealth. But with her channeling, we have to roll, let's just roll her die out here so we can see what it's going to be with her gift. It is another hit. That is good. So I think what we'll do with her, she doesn't have any range attacks, but I do believe she's going to need to go north with Marguerite and help out. Alan should be able to take this I, this uh, stuff, especially with his new handgun. All right, so I think what Marguerite's going to do, she's going to move up to here for her first action. For her second action, she is going to attack the hunting whore right there. Now, again, I think we have to kill that bad boy, right? Let me go take a look at the hunting horror again. I want to make sure I know his special abilities. If the hunting horror survives an attack, the attacker loses one additional sanity. Ah, that's not worried about. Um, actually, that's good. So for our second action, we're going to attack the hunting horror. She's got three dice. She does not have brawling, but her channeling ability is going to give her one automatic success. So let's see if she can pull it off. Okay. Oh, man, that was awful. That's one hit. We're going to take a stress. That'll be her third stress to reroll another one. Okay, that's two hits, three hits. We need how many? We need four. So I think we will take one more stress to see if we can kill him, and we do. All of these are hits, so that's basically, this counts as one because of her arcane mastery. She can then use her dice. This is going to put up two sanity, insanity. I don't care about that. That's perfect. But the hunting horror will not survive that second attack from her. So the hunting horror has been slain for the moment. There could be another one soon. And she is going to go up one, two on the sanity track. One from her dice and one from using her gift. Uh, not quite triggering her catatonia yet, which is, I guess, good. <laughs> she doesn't want to go catatonic quite yet. That was her second action. So for her third action, man, I don't think... I was going to have her investigate the ball goers, but I think we're going to reduce her stress. So she's going to take a chance to heal. Uh, she's going to rest, which allows her to go one, two, three, and reduce all the stress that she has. And that is going to be the end of her turn. There are no monsters with her, but let's see what the Mythos card does. She has yet to get a, a item. Oh, this is good. Okay, the yellow sign. If you are in the same space as Hoster or Disciple, we're not. So anyway, everybody has yellow signs now. So this means that, Mar that Annabelle now gets a yellow sign. But not only do we not advance Hoster, we do not take any... And nothing comes into our space. So she's going to get to draw another Discovery card. Let's see what she gets. The crystal ball, while well, this is apropos for Annabelle, right? Of course they were, they were doing a seance here. You may take two stress to claim the crystal ball, or we can be ensorcelled. I don't like that at all. What's ensorcelled? Actually, I read it. I just assumed it's bad. When you claim this card, choose a space with any face of sorcerers and any face down ball goers. Turn all tokens in that. Oh, yeah, I don't like that at all. So we'll do, we'll see, we're probably going to take the stress since I just healed her. You may take two stress to turn over the top, the, up to two face down ball goer tokens in any space on the board. Keep any revealed sorcerers face up. Okay, we'll take that. Uh, we're going to take the two stress and do that. So Annabelle is going to be become an even better channeler and seer because she now has the power of this crystal ball, but it did take two stress for her to get that. That is the end of another round. That is two rounds this episode, so I think we're going to pause there uh, so we can catch up. Um, we are making progress. It's, I just don't, I'm not, I never seem to make progress as fast as I would like in this game. So we're making progress. I just don't know if it's going to be enough progress. We're going to have to find out. It'll be tough, but I think we can pull this off. We'll see. Um, I, I do like the characters I chose. They're being particularly effective. Alan just had, I mean, my dice rolls with Alan were just bad. It's not his ability. I mean, obviously he's in a good place to do some serious damage right now to monsters and enemies. Uh, coming at him, and he's probably going to be able to take out all the monsters heading down there and usher those sorcerers uh, all the way to the waterfront. And then we just got to find two more. I hopefully, hopefully, once they're at the waterfront, they won't move. I noticed I haven't seen a lot of movement from the faced the the ball goers since that first um, mythos card we drew that made them move. So this is a good thing. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope uh, you're enjoying this playthrough of. Cthulhu Death May Die, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.